Welcome to Self Love Ignited. My name is Katie Allen. I'm a certified health and life coach, and we are here to talk all things self love, self acceptance, body image, health, and total well being. You are going to hear from me, plus, you'll hear the stories of other women who have transformed this already. They have walked this path and they have really learned how to love and embrace all parts of themselves. We are here to help you be inspired, motivated, and to help you really transform your relationship with yourself to be a loving and positive force each and every day. This is so important so that you can really reach your big dreams, feel at home in your skin, be healthy on your terms, and live a big life. What are you waiting for? Let's get to it. On today's episode, I'm speaking with Shay. Shay shares her story of how in July of 2018, her world came crashing down. Her relationship with the person she thought was her soulmate abruptly ended, and all of a sudden life made no sense. She, through a beautiful process, really realized that it had to all come back to self-love and self-acceptance. And today she shares her journey about how she picked up the pieces healed her wounds, and really learned to integrate and love all parts of herself. Shay is a practitioner trained in Reiki, soul guidance and sacred mentoring, NLP, timeline therapy, and hypnotherapy. She is an absolutely beautiful soul with an amazing story to tell. All right, Shay, welcome to the podcast. I'm so happy to have you here. Thank you, gorgeous. I am so excited to be here today. Oh, so why don't we just start very beginning. Let's start with the easy stuff. Why don't you just take a moment and introduce yourself a little bit. Tell us about you and who you are and where you are in the world. Sure. Okay. Well, well my name's Shay. I'm a Reiki healer, practitioner. Um, I'm also trained in NLP, timeline therapy, and hypnotherapy, and I'm a soul guidance and sacred mentoring coach as well. So my passion is really about connecting people back with their true, authentic soul essence because you know that's been my journey over the last couple of years. So, so they're my, um, I guess, qualifications, if you like, um, and that's. That's my passion. That's what I'm here to do, to really um, bring people back to their their truth. Beautiful. That's so beautiful. So this podcast, you know, Self-Love Ignited, we are obviously all about self-love and really telling the stories of women like you who have come from a place of maybe not liking or not accepting parts of themselves to really embracing all the different aspects of who they are. So I would love to just really invite you to start at the beginning of your story. Why don't you just tell us about the challenges that you really faced with that inner relationship and where that all sort of began for you? Yeah, absolutely. And look, I think um, reflecting on my journey now, Gorgeous, this was all um, really thrust upon me um, in quite a massive way that... um, Literally, the rug was pulled out from underneath me and I was forced to take a good hard look at myself Mm -hmm. and um, really take full responsibility. Um, At the time, this happened, this all happened around two years ago now. Um, I had been in a relationship with a soulmate. So it was a very deeply connected um, relationship, which... You know, I realise now it came into my life to activate me and to really start this whole journey of coming home to myself. So that's how it all began. Um, that was about five years ago now. And we were together for three years and our, our connection was very, very intense. Um, and then two years ago, boom, it was just like this massive explosion went off in my face and he left. And I was just left behind going, 
what what has just happened? What is this all about? This makes no sense. This makes absolutely no sense. Um, so at the time, what happened for me is it triggered a dark night of the soul and a spiritual awakening. Um, you know, in the early days, it was really very, very confusing. I had no idea what was happening. There was a lot of uh, tears, a lot of darkness, a lot of um, days just spent crying, you know, a lot of loneliness. Um, it was a really, really dark place and time in my life that made absolutely no sense whatsoever. So I was really, really forced to, um, to like I say, like I said, you know, just take full responsibility for absolutely every part of my being. And I guess for me, I knew that I could sit there and stay stuck in the mud and stay stuck in that dark place, or I could get off my ass and really, you know, take take control of my life and take responsibility for myself. And um, so that's what I chose to do. I knew. Um, that this experience had come to me for a, a reason, for a purpose. And I knew it, it was my opportunity to heal some wounds, to really um, do a lot of deep inner work um, and, and to find myself again. Because although the connection with my soulmate was so intense, I thought that it was love. But, you know, at what I've realised now that we had a lot of um, codependency between us. Mm -hmm. uh, there were a lot of unhealthy, toxic um, patterns in our connection that, you know, I, at the time, I had no conscious awareness of how unhealthy it was. I just thought this was the most extraordinary, incredible love of my life. And, you know, it was bliss. But, um, you know, looking back now and after taking the journey for the last, is I realised that I wasn't being my true authentic self in that relationship. I was allowing behaviours in that relationship that were not um, congruent with my beliefs and what I felt like I wanted and I deserved. Um, I was allowing myself to be dishonoured and disrespected. I wasn't setting boundaries. I wasn't speaking my truth because I just had no love for myself. No, you know, I just thought I had to sacrifice myself for this man who was the love of my life and my everything. But I needed to get back to the truth that I am my everything. Um, and so that's very much what my journey has been about. So, Katie, would you like me to share with your listeners today um, a little bit about how I how I took my journey, some of the things that I did that were really um, just, just transformational for me. Yeah, yeah, please. I would love to hear like how you went from that place of having your soulmate essentially leaving you and being in that sort of really lost, like dark night of the soul, like you said. And I know you, like we know each other outside of this podcast. You are not at all in that space anymore. So yes, please take them all, like, Take some time. Why don't you paint that picture for us? How did this, yeah, how did this happen? Had, absolutely. Um, so look, I guess to start with, um, I started to question absolutely everything. Um, I, I, I started to question every thought I was having, every belief I, you know, I held on to, every single behavioural pattern, um, I really started to question it all and I started to question, is this my authentic truth? Is this really me? I started to take responsibility for everything and I had um, really, you know, just to really look, look within, I had some very, and we all do, some dark patterns of behaviour that, um, you know, I was ashamed of. I was so ashamed of. And I'll, I will share um, an example of one of those patterns that um, really came to light for me once I started to do this work. Um, I used to go into rage with my children. And it was something that I was so ashamed of, so deeply, deeply ashamed of. And the more 
I suppressed that and guilted myself and made myself feel ashamed for that behavior, the more that pattern just kept recreating in, in my life. Mm. So I just started, I started just noticing that pattern and I started to have compassion for myself. Um, I started to talk to my children about it and explain to them that this is a dark part of mummy that I'm trying to heal. And this is not about you. You know, you're not bad. You haven't done anything wrong. This is something that I've learned from my father. And I'm just asking for your forgiveness because until I can forgive myself, until I can ask for forgiveness, um, then, you know, I'm going to keep having guilt and shame around this behavioural pattern. It's not me. It's not my truth. It's something that I had actually learnt from my father at a very young age. Um, so, you know, that's where I really started. I, I did a lot of journaling, a lot of writing, um, and a lot of just um, really noticing. So I would walk around with a notepad and just write everything down, you know, things that would pop into my head, things that um, I would feel. I was just you know, being fully present with self, I guess, um, and really taking full responsibility for, you know, those light and dark parts of myself and, um, you know, the parts of myself that I was ashamed of and I was suppressing and that I really needed to allow to come into the light with love and compassion to be healed. Um, and so that was, that was probably one of the biggest things um, and one of the you know, one of the biggest things I started doing and implementing in mm. my day-to-day -day, um, life, which was transformational for me because, you know, once you start to step up and take that responsibility and it's almost like bringing the unconscious into the conscious awareness. And, you know, while this stuff stays at an unconscious level, it's not coming up to be healed and we just keep recreating the same patterns over and over again. So the only way we can heal that is to bring it to our conscious awareness and take full responsibility. And, you know, that takes a lot of courage to do that. And, um, and time as well. You know, these patterns didn't change overnight. This wasn't something that I could just switch off. You know, these were unconscious responses that were just happening that I needed to consciously be become aware of. And I think the awareness, that's the first key step. Yeah. Because once you're aware of it, then when it comes up, you can just start changing it. Yeah. 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 Yes. yeah. I mean, if you're not aware of it, how are you supposed to do anything with it? You can't because you don't it's, even realize it, right? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And 95% of our behavior is unconscious and we're not aware of it. So when we can really start to become aware of it, that's when we start to become really, really powerful beings and start creating what, who we, you know, start aligning with who we really are yeah. um, and not our patterns and our programs. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, so that was a big, um, step in my journey the other thing was creating stillness mm. because to get to that place where you can start to become conscious and aware you need to create stillness for yourself and this is something I think um, in today's society is so foreign you know we have this belief that we have to be productive all the time we have to be doing things you know we have to be achieving and I can tell you Katie the last two years I have not moved slower in my entire life I had days where all I could manage was a walk yeah. that was all I could achieve in the day and and taking care of my children of course um because I'm on my own with two girls, but I just honoured every single moment what my needs were in that very moment. And um, so, you know, if that's all I could achieve in a day was a walk, then I didn't beat myself up for that. I didn't shame myself. I didn't feel guilty. I just trusted what my body was telling me. Mm. And I trusted that this was a necessary part of my healing journey 
because I need you need to take time to heal. I mean, these wounds, this um, you know, coming back to your true, authentic soul self. It's a lot. It's a lot of healing that needs to be done, and you need to have time and patience um, and space to do that work. So yeah. yeah. So yeah. Can I? Can I just? I'm just really curious because you you've said so much good stuff in there. <laughs> <laughs> But the, one, but the one big thing that, that I really just want to ask you is, you know, when you were at the beginning of this sort of self-discovery journey and coming, coming back to your true self, and, you know, you said some days all you could do is go for a walk, some yep. day, you know, and take care of your kids, like that, that yep. was it. Yep. And you did that without being judgmental and without making it wrong. How yep. did you do that? Because that's the key, I think. Absolutely. And I, I guess for me... I always kept my eye on the bigger picture of, you know, why I'm doing this, Mm -hmm. why I am doing this. And I just knew that this journey and this process, it was so important. It was such an important part of my soul evolution. Um, And for me to be able to come here and do what my soul has been called to come here and do, I knew, I just knew that I had to have a full cup, yeah. um, you know, and, and I was not going to be able to do what, what I've been called to come here and do if my cup was empty. So I always kept my eye on that vision, that bigger picture of why I was doing this. And I knew that until I was um, home again, back to myself, then I couldn't, I couldn't be the mother that I wanted to be for my children. I couldn't be the leader that I know I've come here to be for humanity. Um, and so for me, I always honoured every single step of this journey because I knew every little piece of that puzzle was, was actually creating my whole puzzle, mm-hmm. you know, that whole big picture of, my my truth of why I'm actually here and I couldn't bring any of that old baggage any of those old beliefs any of that old wounding I couldn't bring that with me to to um you know to align with that with with my with the path that's for my highest and greatest good and for the highest and greatest good for 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 humanity because I know I've come here to be of service in a big way and um I knew this journey of healing these two years has been so it's been the foundation you know it's been crucial in preparing me for the next phase of my journey Um, so I really resisted that urge to buy into those I guess 3d ideas that you know we've got to be doing 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 we've got to be making money we've got to be you know all of those ideas and it you know it took me a long time to let go of that 3d ego um that was you know trying to always pull me back into that and i guess every step of the way i always wanted my authentic soul truth yeah um, and that's taken a lot of courage it's taken a lot of courage to let go of that programming, that conditioning, those ideas to align with with my authenticity of who I am and why I'm here. So I guess, yeah, if that helps, I guess just, you know, really staying connected with your heart and your intuition um, really helps to keep focused on that bigger picture of why you're really here because we all know I mean the truth is within each every one of us but because of the conditioning and because of the noise and the busyness and I guess that was the next thing I was going to touch on um, was creating that space for stillness um, because you know that noise and that busyness it's, it's all pulling us off our path it's all just noise and distraction to keep us from our truth. And if you're buying into that and giving your energy away to that, you can't hear that inner voice, that inner guidance and your higher guidance from your higher self as well that's wanting to align you with the path to your highest and greatest. You can't yeah. hear that. 
Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So take us through then that next step. So you were, you know, a couple of years ago, you were essentially dropped on your ass. Yeah, <laughs> totally. <laughs> and, and, and in this dark place and there was a lot of gentleness, there was a lot of taking time to just be with yourself what happened after that? What started unfolding for you and what work did you keep doing? Yeah. On that journey? Yeah, absolutely. That's a great question. Um, and I guess, you know, in the stillness, there was, um, there was definitely spending a lot of time in solitude as well. Um, and yeah, and, and just really coming home to self. And the more I started to do that, the more I started to, and I, I would say in that early phase, I really cocooned myself. Um, I really put a cocoon around myself. I spent a lot of time out in nature all by myself. And I remember one day going hiking. And as soon as I got out to, got out of the car to go on this hike this one day, the tears, the tears, it was just so healing. I didn't even know why I was crying. It was just, I just had to let it flow. I had to let it go. I had to go with it and just trust that this was all part of my healing journey. Um, so, you know, that time of solitude and cocooning myself and really just doing what I had to do in the day-to-day -day world to keep my life ticking um, was, it was absolutely fundamental and crucial part of my healing and releasing, but also the insights that came to me in those moments. You know, I learned so many lessons, so many really, really powerful, powerful lessons when I was in that space. And I remember one day um, going for a hike on my own. And, you know, sometimes it was scary. It was scary being out in the middle of the bush all by myself. But I would just put my hand on my heart and go, you're safe you're safe, you're safe, it's okay. And I'd always bring myself back to my heart and my center and my truth that I am always safe. And um, <clears throat> I remember one day being out hiking and in the corner of my eye, I saw this um, black hoodie jumper. It was like it would been put on a, um, a post. And straight away my mind went, oh, someone's dropped their jumper. And they've just put, you know, someone's picked it up and put it on this post. Anyway, this fear, this wave of fear just came over me. And I had this feeling of what if it, what if it actually wasn't just someone's hoodie? What if there is actually someone in the, in the trees right there? And I remember I was walking alongside a barbed wire fence at the time. And I just had this instinct to turn around and check. And as I did, I fell over and just absolutely shredded my hand to pieces <laughs> on this on this barbed wire fence. Yeah. And I sat there and I just cried and I cried and I just thought, what is the lesson in this for me? What is what is this lesson here to teach me? And I realized that that lesson was about don't look back at the past. The past is gone. You are safe. You are free from your past. Keep moving forward. Just keep looking forward. Keep moving forward. Um, so I guess, you know, that was, that was the beauty of giving myself that time was that, and that space for just me was I was able to learn some really, really deep, profound lessons that I would never have learned if I had been stuck in the craziness and the busyness of doing and just, you know, stuck in my um, unconscious programs and behaviours. Yeah. So, you know, the slowing down, the cocooning, the solitude, the time, the space, it's all so, so important and such a, you know, a just crucial part of healing and coming home to self. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so many. I've got so many stories. I could share, maybe. <laughs> I've had so many profound experiences, um, but it's been beautiful because each one has kept aligning me with my my path that's for my highest and greatest good, and with my truth. Um, yeah. And you know, there's been some tough love in there as well. Sometimes where I've had to get that spiritual kick in the pants, um, 
but you know it's all every single part of it has been beautiful and amazing and if you're open if you're just open to learning the lesson in every single encounter and experience you know it it, it will it will bring you back to truth back to your authentic soul essence but if you resist it and fight it um you know that's when you're in that struggle and um it's it's hard work life becomes hard work when yeah. you're fighting against the flow and you know god spirit your higher self whatever you want to call it the universe um, is you know is working with you to align you with that part so you can either surrender and follow that guidance or you can fight it and you know i choose i just chose to surrender and trust and just keep following the light just it was like these breadcrumbs just laid out in front of me and I just had to, you know, take one breadcrumb at a time, at a time, learn the lesson. Okay, we've done that one. Okay, what's the next one? Okay, <laughs> you know, you take the path yeah. and, and trusting. And I think that's the biggest thing, Katie, is that, you know, we are really, um, as a collective, we're really, um, I guess, controlled by fear. Yeah. you know um and we we live our lives dominated by fear and it's very that fear really makes it hard for us to let go and to have faith and trust in our intuition in our higher selves in the guidance that we're getting from um you know god source your higher self whatever you want to call it whatever it means to you um, that fear really stops us dead in our tracks because it's trying to keep us small it's the ego mind trying to keep us it wants to keep us the same it wants to keep us stuck where we are you know um so that's probably been one of the biggest lessons that i've had to learn is to let go of that fear yeah. to on you know to recognize it and honor it and say you know what i hear you fear i see you fear but i don't need you you know it's okay i'm safe to take this next step i'm yeah. safe to make to follow my true north and my inner guidance and you know i've had to make some decisions that have made absolutely no sense to my my ego mind my ego mind's been screaming at me going <laughs> what are you doing you know, you're dangerous you can't do this but my heart and my soul has been going you've got to do this because this is going to align you with your path that's for your highest and greatest good and so i'll share an example if if i may of one of those choices that you know almost paralyzed me um yeah please do i i um earlier this year i was doing some cash in hand work for a friend of a friend and you know my heart and soul knew i was only doing it out of fear of money and money has been a big thing that I've actually had to heal my relationship with money because I realised I had a very uh, unhealthy relationship with money and I had a lot of fear of money. So I had to heal that. That was mirrored to me through some experiences that I've had. So anyway, I've been doing this um, work for a friend of a friend and um, all the time I was doing it, I just knew that it wasn't where I was meant to be. I knew that I was only doing it because my ego mind was telling me, you need to make money to pay the bills. You know, that's what you gotta do because that's what, you know, that's what I've been told in the program to believe that you gotta work hard. My, my dad was a farmer, so he's a really hard worker and had massive fear of poverty mentality. So I'd grown up with it, it was a big thing for me. Um, and so this one particular day i had gone to go to this lady's house and do my work and she'd had a key cut for me to get into her house and as i put the key in to turn the key the lock wouldn't open and i went okay all right and i had a feeling it was my higher self or god or you know the universe telling me we don't want you here this is not what you're meant to be doing um, and then I, I got into her house and I went to log onto her laptop and same thing, I was locked out. I was literally, I couldn't get in, the password had changed, I couldn't get into her laptop. And I just surrendered then and I just said, okay, spirit, I hear you. I know I'm not supposed to be doing this work. 
And so I just made that choice and I told her, I'm sorry, I've been guided. I need to focus on my mission work. Um, I need to do what I my soul has come here to do, even though it's not bringing in much money at the moment, but I have to have faith and trust that that's what I'm being called to do. And that is going to bring me ultimate fulfillment and abundance in all its forms. And yeah. I know when we align with our truth and what we're what our soul is here to do, that's when we're in what I call flow energy where everything that you need comes to you exactly when you need it. And, you know, it takes a lot of courage to get into that place of just being in complete faith and trust and knowing and following that guidance. And I can tell you, Katie, there have been months when I've gone, shit, I don't know how I'm going to pay rent this, this month, but I just trust and the money is always there. The money is always there. Um, so I'm not afraid anymore. I just keep following the guidance and I just keep trusting that, you know what, that's that's what I have to do and I do that. Yeah, that's beautiful. I love yeah. that. That's absolutely gorgeous. So the, this sort of journey that you're on, and you've used lots of different terms, but I'm just really curious, would you call this a journey of self-love or self-acceptance? Is this just uncovering your truth like what what would you call it if you had to if you had to oh gorgeous I would call it all of those things all rolled into one it okay. really is a journey of coming home to self more than anything um you know it's about finding union within it's it's um balancing your masculine and your feminine because we need both you know we need to be in our feminine energy because that's the receptive receiving energy that's the nurturing the loving um part of us part of our energetic makeup um and then we need to be in our masculine energy sometimes as well which is the doing the taking action taking the tangible steps so it's this beautiful dance of um you know really finding the balance between the two and that wholeness within um, so, you know, healing the inner child wounds, integrating the shadow, the light and the dark within, the balancing the masculine and the feminine, it's all about coming back to your true, authentic soul self, your original DNA blueprint of who God has created you to be. Um, and then from there, you know, then you can start to align with, um, with your authentic soul path your truth because we're all so unique and individual and we're all here for a very unique purpose all of us so when we awaken to that and when we can align with that um, it's just a living a life of freedom you know and bliss and joy and the transformation Katie in my life has just been incredible and not just in mine but in my children as well and our connection it is just so unconditionally loving yeah. it is you know and all of the relationships in my life have completely transformed because i'm now loving honoring and respecting self you know i'm setting boundaries now like i never did before i'm speaking my truth and every time i speak my truth it's so healing no, it's so healing and people will either align with that or they won't and the ones that don't just drop away right. um, and the relationship that I've been able to build with my children's um, father my ex-husband has just been it's incredible you know we've just got to this beautiful place where and I've always said it you know we're still a family no matter what we are still a family um, yes, mum and dad live in different houses, but we still need to work together. We still need to be a team. Um, and it was so interesting to observe that the more love and compassion I found for myself, the more I could find that for others. Yeah. And I stopped seeing myself um, in that relationship with my ex-husband as being a victim and like he wanted to make me pay. And, you know, I just turned that all around and really just saw everything through the lens of love and as soon as I did that it just it transformed my life and my girl's life in the most 
oh, just amazing, divine way. It's just beautiful. It's, you know, yeah. Sometimes I find it hard to find words to describe when I think about that darkness and the, I'd, I would describe it hell that I've been through. Yeah. Um, and to get to this place of just everything is just easy and flowing and working in peace and harmony, it's, it's, incredible incredible but it didn't come without a lot of hard work and sacrifice you know I don't live in the fanciest house and I, I don't you know go on lavish holidays but you know for me that was a short-term sacrifice that I was willing to make yeah. for the long-term gain because I know that my holy rapture and my abundance is it's flowing to me now because I've done the work yeah I've done the work yeah tell us about the work so so <laughs> so you've got so you've told us a little bit about it right so yeah. you so you know there was a lot of just sitting in in you know solitude there was yep. being in nature allowing yourself to just be allowing things to come up um yep. you know not being judgmental like you've talked about a lot of different things so what else and you can go you are a very beautifully spiritual person you can go as woo woo as you want here <laughs> Because because this is your story, so I want to know from your point of view what other tools or practices yeah. or rituals yeah. really have served you the most on yeah. this journey. Yeah, beautiful, beautiful question. Um, oh goodness, gorgeous! There have been so many things, and I think the first thing that I'd like to say is just trust your intuition because you know exactly what you need in every single moment okay so I did that I really followed my intuition and what I felt really guided to do in any particular moment um, so for me obviously Reiki uh, finding Reiki and you know what up until 12 months ago I'd heard of Reiki but I had never had a Reiki healing in my entire life and it was actually something, it was an experience that I had one morning that my guides locked my toilet door on me three times to get me to listen in and go and get a Reiki healing. Like it was just the most insane experience. Um, I thought the kids were playing tricks on me, but when, it, when my toilet door was locking and there was no one in my, in my apartment, I knew it was the my guidance and um, it happened three times. So I had to listen. I had no choice. <laughs> you know, um, but yeah, so Reiki, definitely, that was transformational for me. And after I'd had a couple of sessions, I just said to my Reiki master, you need to teach me this. I don't know what it is, but I, and he goes, yeah, I was feeling that. And so, yeah, I've started doing my Reiki training. I'm not a master yet, but I'm, I'm in the process. Um, so Reiki definitely helped me a lot. Um, and one of the techniques that I learned in my Reiki training, which I think is really, really powerful technique um, and really has helped me a lot to get into the unconscious mind was a, um, it was a, an exercise called 10 minutes of continuous writing. And so what I would do is at the end of the day, I would sit down with my journal and I would just write at the top of my page, how am I feeling? What am I feeling? And then I'd put my timer on and I would just write continuously for 10 minutes without taking my pen off the paper, um, just writing, 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 writing. And, and, and if you get stuck, like if you get a little mental blank, you go, oh, I don't know what to write, just write. I don't know what to write now. I've got a mental blank. And then, and then it starts flowing again. Um, so that technique and journaling really, really helped me. And look, I've always been a writer. It's always been my way of expressing uh, myself. Um, even right when I was a kid, you know, I'd write my write letters to my mum when we'd have fights and things like that. So, mm -hmm. so writing definitely um, helped a lot for me. Um, crystals, of course, you know, I sleep, I've got this beautiful, big um, rose quartz love heart crystal, which I think I've been sleeping with on my chest every night since my dark night of the soul. <laughs> and it's got this through some, you know, pretty, pretty, um, pretty dark times but yeah crystals absolutely prayer for me um, earlier this year I really felt very drawn to the 
deity Kuan Yin. Um, and um, yeah, so I, it, it was a long story, I won't go into it all, but I um, ended up buying myself a Kuan Yin statue and just started praying. And I was using, there's an oracle deck by Alana Fairchild called the Kuan Yin Transmission or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, so that really, really helped me. And every week I would pull a guidance card from Kuan Yin. I would pray to her every night um, and I would just ask, once a week, what do I need to know this week, Kuan Yin? What do I need to work on? And every single week that I pulled a card, it was exactly what I needed to know. And it always just moved me in that direction. So, you know, I've spent a lot of time connecting with the um, energies of the um, angelic realms, the archangels, the ascended masters, um, the goddesses. And I've been doing some training with Alana Fairchild in. Um, She's calling it Saraswati healing now, but it's um, soul guidance mentoring. It's working with the energies of um, the archangels, the ascended masters and the goddesses for deep soul healing. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm really excited at the end of the year, I'll be able to bring forth this offering and these healings. And I know I've shared one with you, Katie, already, which mm -hmm. was amazing. Mm -hmm. And it's always exactly what the client needs. It's just incredible because energy doesn't lie energy is pure truth and that's what i love about working with energy is that it's nothing but truth you feel the truth because it's a vibrational frequency it's a resonance with your soul um, so when you can really start to get good at working with energy and starting to feel what energy is yours and what energy is not yours because i can feel now when i'm taking on collective energy um, and around the start of the whole coronavirus when everyone around me was freaking out i had a very powerful experience where i went to the shops one day and i just felt all of this fear and i knew it wasn't mine because i'd been so happy pottering around at home doing some gardening you know and yeah. then as soon as i went out i felt this fear and i knew that it wasn't mine so when we start to be able to become discerning and we start to be able to learn how to work with our energy and recognize if someone's draining your energy, then you can set that boundary. Um, yeah, that became re that was really, really powerful for me. Um, like I said, I did a lot of inner child healing. So I worked with a practitioner in um, the completion process. It's called um, a, an inner child healing process, and there's plenty out there. Uh, but that, oh my goodness, the shifts that I achieved in those sessions were so powerful. Like after the session, I would just be wiped out. Like I have to go and sleep to let that integrate. Um, so, you know, it's really important on this journey to allow yourself that time to sleep because that's when your body is integrating yeah. all of these, you know, new energies and frequencies and updating your DNA and clearing and healing and, so we've got to sleep, you know, and that was another thing, you know, just lots of water, getting lots of rest, you know, gentle exercise. I stopped slogging it out in the gym because I realised I was just, you know, just being cruel to myself, absolutely yeah. being cruel to myself. Um, and my body didn't deserve that, you know, it wanted healing, it wanted nurturing. And so now, and I moved into more yoga and um yeah, yoga and walking and, you know, I take a grounding walk on the beach every day. I get my shoes off and put my feet in the water. And, you know, that's just a beautiful way for me to connect with the energy of the Divine Mother, who is so unconditionally loving. And, you know, she holds us and she never judges us. She holds us in our deepest, darkest times and moments. And it's just so healing and so nurturing. So, um yeah, lot, oh gosh, there's so much gorgeous, so but much. I'm, I'm conscious of the time, but I hope those <laughs> two things were helpful. Yeah, no, that's beautiful. And I, I think, I love what you've said too, because it's such a beautiful mixture of things. And it's so important that I think anybody who's going through this, this type of journey really understands it's never just going to be one thing. It is no. never, it, it is, it is very much uh, an awareness it's about your thoughts and the belief work. It's about, you know, the emotional stuff. It's about the spiritual side. And it's also about caring for your physical body. 
and yes. and all of them combined and getting the support you need you know you said you worked with somebody yes. to do some inner child healing like yeah. not being afraid of reaching out when you need it because we all need different things at different times but like you said you know that your intuition yes. is telling you yes and absolutely yeah, yeah. The, yeah. We, we can do so much for ourselves, but sometimes it is so incredibly beneficial to have somebody else hold that space for us. Oh, absolutely. Without a doubt. Without a doubt. And this lady actually came to me. She came to me and she, you know, it was, it was amazing. So, you know, like that's what I was saying earlier. When you get into flow energy, you get everything that you need exactly when you need it and and you're right I think you, you touched on a really important point there Katie that um you know this journey of coming back into wholeness it's multi-level and multi-layered it's not just working on the mind it's not just working on the physical body but also the energetic body and also the soul as well because we are multi-dimensional beings we're not just a flesh vessel you know we're far more um complex than that so when you can really, you know, work on your healing at all of those multi levels and layers and integrate all of that. And that's what my real passion is, you know, working with my clients is about integrating and healing across all of those multi dimensions and layers and levels because yeah. it's crucial. Because yeah. that's wholeness. You know, when you're only worth focusing on one part, that's only one small piece of the puzzle. Yeah. If you want the whole, put the whole puzzle together, you've got to work on all of those bits and pieces. They, they just all merge so beautifully to form oneness or unity. Yeah, yeah. So why don't you, it's a beautiful segue, tell us yeah. a little <laughs> bit about um, the work that you do then with clients and your business and how this journey has directly led you into this sort of journey of entrepreneurship. Oh, absolutely gorgeous. Look, you know what? Um, two years ago, I was slogging it out trying to make a living in a multi-level marketing business. And I'd been slogging at that for so long and I just knew it wasn't right. I knew I wasn't, I wasn't fulfilled. It was hard work um, and I knew it wasn't right. And then um, I studied NLP and was really passionate about that started um, coaching, doing NLP coaching, but I knew there was more. I really knew there was so much more because like we were just talking about the multi-levels and layers, mm -hmm. I knew I wanted to support people on more than just the level of the mind. Um, and that's when I started um, getting into Reiki healing and now doing my um, training with soul guidance and sacred mentoring. So I guess my real passion is, is to support people on all of those layers and levels um, through coaching. Uh, I do offer Reiki healing sessions as well, either in person or distance Reiki healing sessions. Um, so, you know, I guess they're my key offerings, mm -hmm. um, and how I like to support my, my clients. But really, I think holding space for them. You know, really, when you can hold sacred, safe space for people um, and do deep listening, which is something, it's just a skill. It is an absolute skill to be able to hold space and really deeply listen to what somebody has to share. Um, that in itself is such a healing healing journey and process within itself. So I and I feel like that's one of my gifts in this lifetime is that I do very much live from the heart, from unconditional love. And I am always focused on what is in the highest and greatest good for the client. What do what what do they need right now? Um, and so that's how I, I choose to work. My, with my clients and um, it's just it just brings me so much joy to see the transformation and the awareness because you know in that safe space when we have that safe space to open up the unconscious mind has the chance to come come forth and sometimes when people are talking they realize things for the first time that they've never realized before so um, yeah it's a really really powerful um, healing modality yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That's incredible. Yeah. Yeah. 
Okay, as we are preparing to wrap up, I feel like you and I could, we could go for a long time. (laughs) (laughs) Just (laughs) just oozing out of us. I know, right? Just And a little bit here and a little bit here. Oh, I know. Um, So if, as we wrap up, I just want to ask you again, you've touched on so many beautiful practices and rituals and exercises and so many things that you have used on this journey and so many of them have been so impactful but if I was to force you to only choose one if there is like one self-love exercise or practice that you would recommend for listeners maybe somebody who is sort of at the beginning stages of this journey yeah what would that one thing be oh Absolutely, without a doubt, I think the stillness. Beautiful. I just think, I, you know, I just think creating that sacred space for yourself is, it's crucial and it's just so powerful. It's really, really powerful. And it's a really powerful first step to taking your power back and putting yourself first because you're connecting with yourself in such a deep, profound way. Um, so that would definitely, if I could choose one thing, um, and my, my biggest recommendation would be, you know, making that a priority. Not just a, a luxury. It's not a luxury to have time for yourself to go and get your nails done. It's, it's priority. It has to be a priority, um, you know. And I'm talking about real sacred stillness. I'm not just talking about going and getting a massage once a month. I'm talking about creating that time and space for self on a regular, regular basis, daily. I mean, I do it daily yeah. and, and not feeling guilty for it, just knowing that this is important. This is important. We need to fill our own cups because we can't help anyone unless we've got overflow. Um, so I would say, gorgeous, that would probably be the most transformational thing that I could share with with your gorgeous tribe here today. I love it. I love it. Okay, Shay, if listeners want to get in touch with you, if they want to find out more about working with you or about, you know, your journey, where is the best place for them to find you? Absolutely. Um, I'm on Facebook, the One Tribe on Facebook, um, and I can provide you the links, gorgeous. I'm sorry, I don't know <laughs> the URL off the top of my head. Um, but yeah, definitely, on, I can connect with me in the One Tribe on Facebook. I also have a Reiki energy healing and soul guidance Facebook group, which I can provide you the links if yeah. any of your tribe would like to come and join me in that space. I do bring forth mini healings every week from the Archangels, the Ascended Masters and the Goddesses. Obviously, I can't go into a deep extended healing, but they're just little mini healings, which are so beautiful. And um, and my, my tribe, they're really um, each week um so yeah they're probably the two places that you can find me and um i would love to connect with anyone who feels guided and uh, you know it'd be just such an honor to support um support them on their journey beautiful okay i will make sure to get those links from you and we will put those in the show notes so if anybody is interested you can just find them down below click on through Awesome. awesome. Oh, thank you so much, gorgeous. Such an honor to um to spend time with you today and to share my story. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you so much for being here. Pleasure. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for listening. I hope that you enjoyed that interview with Shay as much as I did. Unfortunately, we had a little bit of audio troubles throughout, but to be honest, the content was so, so juicy that I couldn't help myself. I thought that it was worth having a little bit of squiggles in your ear to get all of that good stuff. If you want to get in touch with Shay, If you want to find out more about her work, or if you would just like to have a conversation with this amazing human being, all of her contact info is in the show notes. Thank you for being here. Thank you for listening. Here is to loving yourself.